Hi. Um, this is another steering wheel talk. Maybe that's what I'll start calling these since I do them in the car so long, so often. Um, I had, I had really, I was just blogging to myself. I was just video vlogging and it wasn't going to be anything to share necessarily. I was just processing some stuff, but I ran across an idea that I thought is definitely worth sharing. So here I am. And this will, uh, I will be uploading this video. What are your assets? What is an asset? An asset is something that could potentially be of value to somebody else. It's something that could be exchanged for something else. I've been thinking a lot about money lately and what it is, and money is really, like, I mean, any currency at all is an energy exchange. And, um, I think that people need to realize their, their true biggest potential for income is just their set of skills. Like, when you work, for example, even if it's a clock in, clock out job, like a nine to five, um, like when I was working at Starbucks or something, you know, my asset, yeah, okay, what I'm trying to say is Starbucks wasn't making me money. My time was making my money. My attention to detail, my consistency, my ability to show up, my effort, my customer service skills, which is really just my social skills, um, and my, like, quick learning, stuff like that. Like, all those skills that I brought to Starbucks, those skills are what made me money. Starbucks didn't make me money. My skills made me money. Okay, um, I think that anything that is paying you, you should reframe and say, I am making this money because of this. Like, what am I selling? And those are your assets. So at that job, there were particular assets that I was selling, but that's not the job I wanted because, like, those aren't really, that's not really, like, well, the environment w wasn't what I wanted. Um, not only do I want to be paid and paid more, but, like, I also want to be in a place that I enjoy and a place that doesn't stress me out. I enjoy Starbucks as a customer. It stresses me out as an employee. Okay. Um, so... You don't even... I was just about to say, so you want to look for a job that has fill in the blank, but that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm going to say. Don't look for a job that you like. Work on the assets that you would like to capitalize on. And some of that isn't even work. Like, you already have a set of skills. You can work on more, for sure. But you already have things that are of value. I promise you, everybody does. Everybody has um, certain abilities um, and perceptions, things that they notice that other people don't. It could be your attention to detail. Um, it could even just, and sometimes just your personality. It's just like what it feels like to be around you. That can be, that can be your asset. Um, you have so many things about you that are valuable and that people would give you things to have more of. I'm not even going to say money. I mean, it could be money, but like money is just there so you can get something that you need. It's a placeholder for bartering. At the end of the day, you still are trading something for something. Um, at the end of the day, you are trading your time for a place to live. You're trading your willingness to show up to something time and time again. You're trading that for gas for your car. You, you see what I'm saying? Um, a lot of my jobs that I've got have actually come to me or they've been very easy to get um here's 
why. Um, a, a lot of them I got honestly just because I showed up as somebody valuable. For example, one summer I was an assistant uh, for uh, for a teach for an old teacher of mine. Like he just remembered what I was like as a student. He remembered my work ethic, and then when he needed somebody to help him with like organizational stuff for his own work, he thought of me and just reached out to me and said, "Hey, are you interested?" in this kind of thing, it's this many hours a week and, and I would be able to pay you this. Like, I didn't have to send a resume in. I didn't have to do an interview, he just asked me if I wanted it. Pretty much yes or no, okay? Uh, my first teaching gig was just because somebody was leaving, a guitar teacher was leaving their studio and was trying to help that studio replace himself. He thought of me because he knew how passionate I am about music and that I'm a good people person. And so he called me and said, hey, I'm trying to help my old workplace fill my position. I think you'd be good for it. I could see you working with my, stu with my students. And I pretty much walked in and got the job within like three days. Um, and yeah, this is... This is because, like, this ease of flow through my work life, a lot of it has been just because I've made my assets visible. I've just made it very obvious to the world that I am fill in the blank, that I'm passionate about my work, that I'm willing to show up consistently, that I'm reliable that I have empathy, that I listen well, okay? Like those are, th every, em every employer wants those things. If you have those things, great, step one. And, and you might have to show, you have to, you might have to make it to an interview to show somebody that. But like, um, s step two, which is just like pre-interview work, pre-application work is make it visible, make it obvious. As much as you're willing, as much as you are willing to make your assets visible, make them visible. And that could be so many things. And I think of new things that I have that are valuable almost every day. I think, oh, I can make money doing that. That could be cool. I could sell that. I could make the these things that are easy for me to make. I could just sell that and then it becomes kind of a like well how do I make that super visible and I haven't cracked the code on on all that's not not on all of it if I can make my art visible to the right market then I'd be selling more I, I know it's valuable but I need to so so it I know it's valuable so it is an asset for me I know that there are people that would want what I make on their walls but I do have to get in front of them because they can't know that they want something that they haven't that they don't even know exists right you can't ask me for something that doesn't exist or if I haven't made it yet as like a if I'm gonna be a commission artist like I still have to you still have to know you still have to have in your mind that I will create something for you I have to make that really obvious to you. And so an example of a, of a way I thought of today that, that I'd like to be able to capitalize on, like an, an asset that I have is I create musical ideas multiple times a day, like way more than I'm able to like make fleshed out songs for. And I've just been putting them in an archived folder for almost like more than 10 years now. I've, I have archived every single music idea worth keeping that has come through my head. Um, so that's multiple a week for about 10 years. That's a lot of ideas. I'm never, I'm not, I don't have the time to make songs out of all of them. So do they go to waste? Well, they have been. But what if I like organize them? polish them up, maybe re-recorded some of them, 
to make them more usable. To transcribe some of them. Something, you know, but if I made them presentable, easily visible, easily accessible, and then said, hey, like, here's a toy box of musical ideas. If you take something that you want to use, take it. Here's a tip jar. Virtual, you know, here's a virtual tip jar. Um, just, uh, you know, do something fun with it. How about it? I could do that. And I'd, I'd probably make some money off of it. If I got in front of the right community, I could make a lot of money off of it. And there's communities, you know, built already to connect, you know, people with ideas to people that want ideas. So, you know, I, I could explore more of those. But I've been building up this asset for a decade without doing anything with it, without making it visible. So really, I haven't been... Uh, I haven't been reaping all that I can out of the work that I do. And I'm realizing that in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ways. And as somebody that really values efficiency in general for everybody, I encourage you to try to imagine, I encourage you to imagine yourself as somebody who knows exactly what their assets are and which ones they enjoy about themselves and imagine how visible could you make that to the world could you be so visible to the world that work just comes to you money just flows to you say you have that I want that offers of whatever um, yeah and and think think about examples of that think about people that you know what they're good at and that might not even be the only thing they're good at or it might not even be the thing they're best at but there's probably people where like you they've shown you certain parts of themselves and so that's how you picture them um, and then ask yourself, like, what kinds of things have they done to make that desirable? What What is desirable to you when you see other people? What's the kind of thing that you see in people that you're like, man, if I had the money, I would pay for that. And then flip it around and what what kind of person could I be that other people would see and say, I would love to have him on my team. He's worth this much per hour, you know, that kind of thing. Um, if you're trying to upgrade, if you're trying to make career decisions, or just get more out of your career, don't think about it as a job that gives you money. Think about it as your own assets that are giving you money, and then grow those. Okay. I think that's about all I have to say right now. I hope any of that is helpful to you. Money's hard. No, it's not. Money is perceived as hard by many people. But money can be easy. I know that in some ways I'm speaking from a place of privilege. But in some ways, I am definitely not. Um, what would you have to believe about money in order to believe that money is easy? In order to be the kind of person who didn't stress out when they thought about money? What beliefs would you have to change? Okay. So... I know money is perceived as hard, and money isn't, like, fair. Energy exchange isn't fair. Nature isn't fair. Our systems, our society is really not fair. I don't, I don't want you to get stuck on that. Should we be working to make it more fair every day? Absolutely, if we can. You know what's going to help that? People feeling empowered to think about money in a way 
that excites them, not stresses them out. So that instead of being resistant to money, if you think money is hard and money is scary and money is unfair, you're going to be resistant to money. I just, how could you flip that? How could you be a money magnet? You'd have to have a different mentality about it. If you hate money, how do you expect it? How do you expect to have more of it? If you hate money, you can't expect that you're going to be naturally attracting more of it. You have to flip your beliefs about it. Mainly that starts from understanding that it is an energy exchange and that you do have energy just as a human. You do have energy. You might not have as much as you want, but you have energy. And there are things that when you do them, give you energy or take less energy than other things. And you need to be thinking about that. What doesn't drain you? What excites you? What gives back to you? What situation would you have to be in in order to have a surplus of energy? If you have a surplus of energy, you will eventually ha be able to turn that into a surplus of money. Because money isn't a currency. Currency is an energy exchange. Okay. I've done a lot of thinking about this. So it might sound like I'm oversimplifying it. But I am kind of on purpose. Because the simpler it is as a concept to you, the less resistances you're going to have to it, the less power it's going to have over you, and the more power you will have over it. So this is just an invitation to start reshaping some of your own ideas about your energy. Okay, cool. Have a good day, y'all.